So I don't know if I should uh, sing myself happy birthday, but I did have happy birthday sang to me this morning. Uh, I did get it in a voicemail, but I didn't hear the phone ring. So anyhow, today is my birthday. Uh, yes, I am a Virgo, and yes, I am a September baby. So today being my birthday... <laughs> Oh, you're not going to believe this. For the past year, I've been telling people that I'm 63 years old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know if anybody else uh, goes through that, you know, as you get older and you kind of have a tendency to forget. But, yeah, I've been telling people for the past year I'm 63, and I wasn't. <laughs> Today's my birthday. So, you know the old adage where you always lie about your age? Well, I lied about my age and I didn't even have to. And now, I could never tell people that I'm 62 because I missed that whole boat. <laughs> so, it's kind of like, oh, it's a little frustrating. Anyhow, I got my cat cuddling and I got my little snuggles from my little kitty and I had my morning coffee and my morning routine. And now we're back on this 60s kick. And what better time than my birthday, right? So today I'm going to kind of talk about um, the parties. The parties we used to have because today's my birthday. So what better thing to talk about than the parties, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. So back in the day when, you know, when you were like, usually it, we partied a little bit earlier than they would. Well, I don't know. Nowadays things are so different, but... Back in the day, uh, I'm going to tell you about a few instances in my life, a couple of birthday parties that I had, and some of the things that we did. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you know, and uh, like I said, it was a bit of a rebel. I mean, this was, we're talking, the one particular party I remember was in the 70s, but in the 60s, things were things were tough but you know my mom would she would bake a cake if she had the ingredients but she she tried to make the day as special as she could so kudos to you mom wherever you may be now here's the thing is that back in the the 60s and the 70s especially the 70s let's say 70s and the 80s okay we had um we had specific places that we would party and more than more than likely it was a place where our parents you know knew that we were there because everybody would frequent those places but the parents would never come out to get us anyhow <laughs> anyhow <coughs> so the we named them so there was one that was called blueberry fields another we called uh strawberry fields um what was the other well and then there were ones that they would go to um the quarry the quarries because there was a big piles of sand dunes and you know they would bring their um what they call them four wheelers or whatever and they would you know their their motocross bikes or whatever they're called motorcycles whatever they would bring them out there the boys and they would ride up and down the sand dunes and you know they would have a couple of pints with their friends you know unbeknownst of course to the parents don't think our parents didn't know. They knew exactly what we were <laughs> what we were doing. But you know, the parties were. Um, it was fun. It was fun. Everybody uh, was invited. It wasn't a specific people. I mean, if you showed up at the sand dunes and there was a party, you were welcome. There was no specific invitations, right? So everybody partied together. It was kind of like, and they did have a thing called uh, what did they call it? The hog wrestle. Now, I only went there once in my whole life, and that was maybe, if I'm lucky, in the early 70s. And I wasn't supposed to be there. Now, the hog wrestle was where my older brothers uh, would go when they had dances. And, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was near the water, I think, and it was out toward... Um, another little town but it was on on the way out to I think it was toward Cumbermere and there was like a little I think it was a motel an old motel and it had been renovated or whatever and they used it as a thing called the hog wrestle now because I didn't go there I didn't know a lot about it but I do know my brothers went there <laughs> oh yeah my brothers went there I remember my very oldest brother uh, I remember him going there with his friends and I remember my second oldest brother also going now I don't think I don't know 
about my younger brother. I'm not really sure um, if he was old enough to, to frequent, but I was there, I think, in a vehicle for some reason. I can't remember, but yeah, I was there. Um, it might even have been a party that they were having for the younger people, but like for the young teenagers, like a, a teenage dance in the summer. So it might have been something like that, but I can't specific, specifically remember. However, it was called the hog wrestle. And apparently the reason why is because every time the older boys or the older teenagers, the older um, kids, would go there, there was always a fight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my older brothers were always involved. I'm pretty sure. Because, you know, it was a bunch of rebels, right? And, um, yeah, <laughs> my brothers were lovers, not fighters. But I had one brother that was a lover and a fighter. And, uh... Yeah, and he used to get in a little bit of trouble, right? He used to get in a little bit of trouble, but he didn't take no flack from nobody. <laughs> he was a pretty tough kid. So anyhow, those were what I remember from that, and I remember them going to the hog wrestle and going to dances and, and things like that, right? So, but uh, there was the quarry, and everybody would bring their trucks, and it usually was trucks or their little, back in those days, it was like uh, Volvos, right? It was Volvos. I know my brother had a Volvo. It was like a... A station wagon Volvo, you know, those kind of like high top ones where it had like, it was like a van. Anyhow, yeah, so he had one of those. And they would go out there at the quarry. And, you know, in the 70s, uh, the late 70s, before I went to the military, I, I went there a few times to the quarry. In fact, I got my first kiss at the quarry. And, uh, yeah, okay, my first kiss was at the quarry. And indeed, the fellow that I got my very first kiss from uh, was driving a dark blue Volkswagen bug, like the Herbie Bugs, the Beatles. Yeah. And he was so cute. He was such a cutie. He had a chipped tooth in the front, and it just made him all the more, um, what's the word, intriguing, right? I mean, a young girl, right? I think I was, because it was my very first kiss, and I basically went all through high school without that you know that kind of thing I mean he was my very and I mean my very first and uh, yeah so it stuck in my head and you know every once in a while I kind of spy and I check him out on Facebook and I see that he did well for himself um, and things like that so you know the, the memories the memories aren't bad but that was at the quarry and trust me I'm not the only one I'm sure I'm not the only one that got their first kiss at the quarry so let's just just say that right but there were other places that we would party that we would go and um a couple of them were like um strawberry fields strawberry fields was out in the country and like its name says it's where the strawberries grew and it's where a lot of young girls lost their innocence <laughs> just see wasn't me though i did not there no <laughs> Honestly, Mom, honestly. Anyhow, and then there was another thing that was another place that was called Blueberry. I think they called it Blueberry Hills. Now, I might know where that is because I think when I was growing up, when I was being raised, um, I think that it was close to where I lived as a young girl on the farm. I'm pretty sure that's where it was. And, you know, there was... Um, <laughs> I'm telling so many secrets. Oh, my God. People are going to just hate me. Anyhow... Um, on the way to Blueberry Fields or Blueberry Hills, there was um, someone who would um, cater to their uh, cater to people who wanted to party, cater to their um, thirst. Let's put it that way, and everybody knew where it was. Everybody knew. The cops knew. The the town people knew. I mean, even the, you know, the highfalutin people in town. And don't forget, I lived in a small community that was like, like it was like Harper Valley, right? And everybody knew everything. <laughs> even the bigwigs, even the police themselves would go there after work if they, you know, if the hotels were closed, would go there to get some refreshments. <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Anyway, so everybody knew. And you'd stop, you'd get your refreshments, and then you'd go out to Blueberry Hills. 
and then you'd go swimming or you know but it was it was it was fun it was fun it's like um woodstock uh, I think that was in the 70s. I think I even believe that my brother went to Woodstock, uh, that massive party. I'm not even sure where it was, but I'm pretty sure my older one of my older brothers went to that party and it was similar, right? So when you had parties back in the in the the 70s, I'll say the 70s and the 80s, more over the 70s because it was the hippie uh, stage you would uh yeah the parties were just like woodstock i mean everybody was welcome it was like a big free-for-all <laughs> there was fights there was drinking there was you know lots of innocence there was like uh you know long time commit uh, long-term commitments made there was a lot of you know crossing that boundary of you know becoming a a young woman uh, take place in some of those areas so you know it was a time of like free love remember in the 70s in the hippie stage it was you know there was a lot of protests and sit-ins and things like that when the young people disagreed with what the older generation was trying to slide down their throats they would step up to the plate and they would kind of say like you know not a chance right so they were rebels a lot of rebels we were um we were gaining our independence and our freedom and we were gaining life experience and a lot of the time there'd be a little bit of flush pushback from the parents or the authority figures in our lives and so you know that's the way it was uh i'm not really sure if truancy was was rampant but i do know that there was quite a few times that <laughs> i remember you know the older kids skipping school i never did because I was watched like a hawk. I never skipped school. In fact, I don't even remember um, taking time off school because I was sick. I, I don't remember ever getting sick. However, I do remember other members of my family, older members, um, who I looked up to, you know, skipping the occasional school. And back in those days, a lot of the young men would quit school they would quit school and they would get jobs and you know help to support uh, the family and that's um, that's basically I think what took place in my circle in my close connections a lot of the the family members that I knew they did quit school early to get a job to gain that independence and that financial freedom and they also would help um, I mean, my mother was a single mom, right? So they would help uh, when they could. I mean, my oldest brother was, uh, wasn't was even in um, the country. My, br my oldest brother was living out of the country. He was in the, the American Navy. He had a... He was a... A submariner they call them yeah so he was on a sub for a period of time and then he was on a um, a nuclear warship I think a nuclear ship anyhow whatever it be I can't I can't remember I was just a little girl but he was um, you know he was very vigilant on sending home little stipends every once in a while and I remember and I still have it I still have it my brother sent me a pearl um, cross that he got from I think it was the Philippines in his travels while he was in the Navy and I still have it I don't have the chain but I have the cross and it's all cultured pearls uh, but I was missing one pearl so I've been trying to fix it and I did get another pearl from another necklace and I'm trying to uh, kind of like glue it in there but it's not working too well so I might have to take it to a jeweler to get it fixed but it's my pride and joy and I will never I mean I will hand it down because it was that important to me so and there's only one pearl that's missing but yeah back in those days um, you know the older members of the family would usually help out they would help out with the finances or you know Christmas time gifts and things like that and my family was no different no different so but this is you know basically talking about the parties <laughs> and the parties were frequent it was you know the a weekend thing in the summer there was a lot more they would have bonfires and they would bring their guitars and you know, they, all, all my brothers, all my brothers had beautiful, beautiful, long, long hair. Now, my older brother didn't, because my older brother was kind of straight-laced. 
and he went to the seminary and then he went to the military so like you know so he never really had long hair when he did get out of the military and he came home he was sporting a massive beard bright bright red beard like a red beard because it runs in the family and um uh, fairly long hair, maybe my length now. For a guy, this would be long, right? So, yeah, and it was kind of unusual to see him like that because all growing up all through the years, he always had that kind of like brush cut. He always had that short, short um, shoulder length hair. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think it was even more than shoulder length because it was, he was pretty clean ridden, but um, my, o my other two brothers had long hair, and I mean long, to the middle of their back. I think my one brother had shoulder length long hair, and um, my other brother had like to the middle of his back, and beautiful hair, beautiful hair. So, you know, the 70s was a time of self-expression, and it was a time of... Uh, freedom uh, freedom loving people not like 2022 or 2023 yeah there was a lot more freedom back there and we celebrated those freedoms and we celebrated the fact that we were allowed to kick up some flack to kick up some flack if you didn't disagree it was mainstream to have a sit-in or to have a, a protest or to have a you know whatever to carry your banners and it was mainstream it was expected that was uh you know kind of like the protocol of the 70s where we were gaining our freedoms through our voice however in 2023 things are a lot different you see where i'm i'm taking this like the way we live the way we survive the way we did so many different things is such a far cry from what's taking place in our world right now so you know it's kind of you know it's kind of different and i do remember one of the politicians that is in power right now his father was alive when i was uh you know was in the same era and he was in power and he was um that this particular um politician was a bit of a rebel his um spouse was a bit of a rebel they smoked the pot and they you know were i mean this particular politician uh he was known as a ladies man he was a lady killer he was kind of like you know all the women loved him right all the women loved him and all the the men envied him and he was bilingual so you know what they say about the french men right well <laughs> there you go so but back in those days it was different it was different even if the authority figures didn't agree with what we expected or what we wanted or what we were vying for they weren't as forceful they weren't as um well you wouldn't have called out the national guard let's put it that way you wouldn't have called <laughs> you wouldn't have called you know <laughs> things would get a little unruly and you know maybe the cops would be called and the cops would come and arrest a few people but it wouldn't be this massive lockdown okay so you know things have changed quite a bit over the years so yeah that's an important thing to note that's how far that we have come uh from the 60s 70s and now into the year 2023 a lot of things have changed a lot of things have changed so but yeah, back in the day, the parties were like amazing. They were amazing, and they would go on all night. They would go on all night long, and a lot of the times they would some sometimes when there was, um, and this I got in so much trouble for. <laughs> I was a rebel. I was just a rebel. I really was, and I I was a hippie. I was into the bell bottoms, and I mean I even went through the stage with the um, the hot pants. Now, I wasn't allowed to really wear them because they were really short. And, you know, I think I would have been, like, squashed on that idea by my mom. But I do remember the maxi dresses and things like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another video um, about the dressing. So this is particularly about the parties, okay? But the parties were uh, fun. They would go on all night long. There would be bonfires there would be food some people would bring food other people would bring refreshments some people would bring you know um you know pot was uh pot was rampant back in the day and you know i had my mother had a neighbor 
who grew pot in his backyard. And I was only... <laughs> Jesus, I was young. I was young. I was, I was like 15, maybe. No. It was before I went to the military, so I would have been about 14, 15. And the neighbor used to give me bags of pot. What the hell did I want to do with that? I didn't know what to do with it. I, I, didn't, I didn't smoke it. I didn't know what to do with it, but he, he gave it to me, so I took it. <laughs> I took it. And that's how I learned to roll uh, shags when I first started to smoke. And, you know, I didn't have any money and the funds were tight. I would roll shags. So, you know, that's where I learned it back in the 70s. That's where I learned it, the 70s and the 80s. So, yeah, so some people would bring pot. And, you know, it was just a big free-for-all. It was a, a massive party and everybody was invited. So, and that's where there was no, um, there was no age limit. Nobody judged anybody. Hell, I remember one time going to my, my oldest, very oldest brother, uh, and I mean, he was a lot older than me, and I got in trouble for this, but he just kept an eye on me. But he was at a party, and I showed up <laughs> with my friends. I showed up with my friends. <laughs> anyway, he told me, you better keep it clean you better be good <laughs> and I did I did I did and he made sure I didn't drink or anything but he didn't tell me to go home and it was and you're not going to believe this but it was at the principal's he hung out with the principal's son okay and it was at the principal's house the principal wasn't there but his son was there and his son had this massive party and everybody showed up from all around town I mean all around town all different ages there was minors there was you know there was people drunk and vomiting in the in the front yard and <laughs> I think if the principal would have been there I think we all would have been kicked out of school and that's the truth and I don't even know um, yeah I would have been maybe I would have been in high school yeah, I probably would have been maybe in my first year of high school, so I think, but I'm not sure because, like I said, the memory's kind of, you know, on the dates, right? But but I was there. I remember being there, and I remember my brother <laughs> telling me, keep it clean. you got to keep it clean. Anyhow, so that's how it went. And, you know, I remember watching, um, you know, I remember watching girls, uh, you know, hook up with boys and go up the stairs in the principal's house to the rooms upstairs. I remember seeing that. I do truly remember seeing that. And, you know, I didn't do that because I know if I did, my brother would have kicked my butt all the way home. So, and I wasn't really interested. I was more interested in meeting people and, and you know, like partying. And that was my first experience at that type of thing. But that was the one and only time, only time that I was at a party that my oldest brother was at because he was very, very strict, very strict. So uh, that was one of the instances. Now I'm going to tell you about a party that <laughs> my sixth, oh, it was, would have been my 16th birthday party? Yeah, it would have been my 16th birthday party. So my sister, sorry, I'm having a really bad hair day. Anyhow, my sister and my younger brother decided that they were going to make sure I had a 16th birthday party. And they invited all these people. And they invited the guy I had a crush on, okay, at that time when I was 16. And uh, his name was Wade. I'll never forget it as long as I live, right? So um, now don't forget, I've already had my first kiss at this point, right, by somebody else, my very first kiss. And this would, you know, this... Wade was like my my crush of the season of that time so anyway we had this party and um, Wade gave me a kiss yeah he gave me a kiss and so I remembered that for a long time however he left <laughs> he left and because he wasn't going to hang out with a bunch of 16 year olds because he was a little bit older right but I think he was like 17 maybe 18 anyhow so he left and when he left, that's when all hell broke loose. <laughs> that's when all hell broke loose, yeah. So where we lived, they had um, a horse-drawn carriage out in front of, like, we lived in um, a building that was built beside a store. And I think they called it Chalet. And they sold, like, you know, snowmobile suits, and they sold, uh, sold snowmobiles and things like that, right? So 
And they also rented us the house that we lived in next door. However, <laughs> they had this horse-drawn carriage out in front of the house. <laughs> my mom left. My uh, siblings encouraged my mom to go to my grandmother's, so she did. She went to my grandmother's and gave me free reign of the house. <laughs> Big mistake that was. Big mistake that was. So anyhow, <laughs> she left. My brother and my sister left, and they trusted me, right? And I trusted me. I wasn't going to do anything bad. Anyhow, so some people got into some pot, and some people got into some heavier stuff, unbeknownst to me, because I didn't do that shit. I didn't do it, any of it, right? But... I went, I left my, everybody showed up. Uh, there was, there's a smaller town further down the road and it was the, the Whitney boys, right? And the Whitney boys were always so hot. They were hot looking boys. And so they were invited to the party. And yeah, they came and one of my girlfriends, one of my besties had a crush on one of the boys from the Whitney uh, gang. So the whole group of Whitney boys came down to the party. But I also, I had a crush on a guy from Renfrew, which is another little town. And guess what? He showed up with, a, with one of his friends. Now, I don't know how the hell he knew it was my birthday because my sister didn't know him. Nobody knew him because that, you know, that was from one of the instances when I took off as a rebel with my, my other bestie and we hitchhiked to Renfrew and that's where I met him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a whole new ball game. That's a whole new ball game. Like I said, I was a rebel. Anyhow, so they all showed up at the party. Well, we wanted to go swimming at the beach. So we left the party. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend and uh, another uh, girlfriend and three boys. Two of the boys from Renfrew and um, I think one of the guys from, from Whitney came. And there was three of us, three girls and three boys. And we went skinny dipping down at the water. While we were gone... <laughs> The people that were at the house. I can't believe I did this. <laughs> My mom would have just strangled me. Anyhow, listen. They hooked up <laughs> the horse-drawn carriage to the car, to a car. <laughs> and they pulled it downtown of the small Harper Valley town that I lived in. They pulled it downtown and they left it there. And then they went home. And the party, I mean, the party closed closed down basically right so I show up back at the house and the the horse drawn the horse drawn carriage is gone from the front of the house oh. <laughs> I didn't know what to do I didn't know where it was or nothing anyway my friends from you know ran through they left and they went home my friend went home everybody went home and I had to clean up after the party and my mom came like the next day I was talking to my mom You don't even want to know. You don't even want to know. But listen, I totally understand. And I'm sure mom's watching from up there and she's saying, girl, you gave me a hard time. You were a handful. And I was. I was a handful. I was a rebel without a cause. And that's what we did. So, you know, back in the day, and there was no repercussions. I mean, I got in trouble, but... There was no, uh, like the cops didn't come over and, you know, they didn't raid my party or nothing. They, they did nothing. They basically just said, I mean, we were young people having fun. And so they basically said, okay, go get the wagon, bring it back and put it there. And the, the guy that owned um, the chalet store, he just kind of blew it off. He laughed it off, you know, as long as you put it back like you know because he realized that you know we're just young people and we're experimenting with life and we're you know having fun and indeed that's where that party ended but I do know that um, I didn't have a party again <laughs> so anyhow that that was the end of that anyway I think shortly after that because I would have been that would have been my 16th birthday party I signed up in the military when I was 16 and uh I had to wait a year till I turned 17, but my mom signed the paper. So I was on leave without pay for a year, and then I went. Like I did the process,
prior to turning 17 and then at 17 I was off on the plane to uh, Cornwallis, Nova Scotia for my basic training. But up until that point, I was a rebel without a cause. So that's the end of my stories for this time and I shall see you on the next video. God be willing. Namaste. Bye.